Hi everyone, it's uh, it was our rest day in Assisi, and so I'm not giving it a number. I only number the days that we're walking, and uh, today was not a walking day, but it it there there was some walking involved. So don't don't uh, think that we didn't walk, um, but it was a bit unexpected, and I just I really struggled tonight with how to talk about today because it was um, it was a very inspiring day and um, it's you know the day that we're in a sissy and unbeknownst to us uh, when we planned this and, and had we known this we would have planned it probably just slightly different by a day or so was that um, the 4th of October is the Feast of St. Francis. And so here in Assisi, the 4th is a national holiday. Yeah. Now, different than the national holidays in the U.S., nothing really shuts down. So it's, but it is a very festive event. And... Uh, and the third is also a festive event because, in fact, Francis died on the 3rd of October today, as opposed to the, the fourth being the feast because it's the official day he died. It was only because he died after, uh, like, it, it, it's estimated he died about 7 p.m. And in the and you see this in the Jewish faith, faith the faith also is that um, the once sun goes down, it's the next day, and that's why Francis's feast day is the fourth, when in fact he died on the third. Well, um, it is amazing what goes on here and the the things that happen we're going to go tomorrow morning before we take off walking we're going to go and um see a procession that uh, of everybody here in in Assisi as they're processing to the the basilica of St. Francis and today we had a wonderful tour with Alessandra, and I think I've mentioned before that Alan, Becky, and Kathy and I had done a a visit to uh, Assisi back in 1918, excuse me, 1918, 2018, and um, I had accidentally, maybe providentially, um, run across this tour guide on a website and booked her to give us a tour back in 2018. And then as I was planning the tour, planning for me and Kathleen and Stephanie to walk this, I ran across the fact that she's still guiding tours. And so I contacted her and asked if she would give us a guided tour. And while I remember being very um, positive about her tour and being happy about it. I don't remember how absolutely wonderful it was. And Alessandra took us all over the city, uh, giving us background of everything. And some of the things she said were just, just incredible. And so Kathleen took notes. And so I might have to, uh, I might have to read my, read from, notes, but one of the things she said as she was describing, we were in the Duomo here in Assisi, and you could see the layers that they've, that they've dug out underneath the Duomo, and they've got them set, they've got massive glass, I don't know what you're going to call it, stair, steps that you can walk across and you're looking down and you see all the layers below the cathedral here in, in Assisi. And she, she made the comment, she goes, 
You know, all of Europe is like this massive lasagna where it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. And we started laughing so hard at her discussion of it, but it was also true that the Duomo, we're not talking about the Basilica of St. Francis, I'm talking about the Cathedral of Assisi is built on top of a Roman temple and you can see underneath the cathedral they've dug out to show you the different uh, Roman walls underneath this church. And then she gives us just a um, understanding of how it worked back in Francis' time. So it's 1200, 1200s and uh, Francis, they, they don't really preach in churches they preach in the squares and they and they're huge squares in front of these churches and Alessandro was explaining all of this to us and it was just fascinating and in, in one of the main squares in front of the cathedral there is over the side a few windows and this is where St. Clair was. St. Clair was a a blue blood in uh, Assisi at the time of St. Francis. And St. Francis would come into the square. And what was really interesting is she would describe it in a way that Francis was, was what we would think of as in the 60s as a hippie. He, the people didn't think anything of him. He was just a crazy guy who was walking around telling people there's a better way to worship God and it includes poverty and it includes serving other man. It includes this, it includes that. And Claire's listening in a almost royal family from her window and runs away with her sisters to join, to follow Francis. And it was just the way that Alessandra explained the story, it was just, it was heart wrenching, heart touching, and the way that she would explain it. And then we went down to a, we walked down, it was funny that she said in her 23 years of tour guiding that she's never walked with Americans to San Damiano. She goes, are y'all up for the walk? And we said, been walking so far, yeah. And we walked to San Damiano. And you remember when, remember when I was telling yesterday about walking to the laundromat and what a foolish thing? Well, San Damiano's on the way. And so uh, we walked down to San Damiano. What, what's, what is really fascinating about San Damiano is it was a Benedictine uh, church that had been used as a hospital and had fallen into disrepair, but they had never taken down the crucifix, a huge, I could explain the artwork only because Alessandra explained the artwork. I could explain it, but it, it, that's irrelevant. What happened was Francis was at a time of really... Um, questioning life and not knowing what to do with his life. And the story of Francis is fascinating and and uh, it's, it's something that really is touching if you spend time listening to what his life was like. But at this point in time, he went down to Damiano because he was, I don't want to use the word despair, despair is a sin. So it's not, dis it wasn't despair, it was depression because he had left his father, he had left his family, he had uh, devoted himself to following Christ, but he was confused on what was, what was his role. And I frankly understand that confusion of what, what is my role? What am I supposed to do? And he went to Damiano, it was a church in disrepair, and the crucifix that was there, he was praying, and he heard the 
he heard from Jesus on the crucifix, rebuild my church, rebuild my church. And he took it very literally. He thought rebuild San Damiano. So him and his friends and lepers and poor people all, as a matter of fact, he, <laughs> you, you kind of want to wonder about the ethics here, but he actually, at the same time they were rebuilding the cathedral in Assisi, and evidently uh, Francis went up and stole some of the supplies from rebuilding the cathedral in Assisi to rebuild the Church of Damiano. St. Damiano, and that crucifix is still today now in a church called the Church of St. Clair, which is also in Assisi, which was this girl that followed him and the blue blood girl who took his, her sisters with her and eventually her mother after her father, or actually She's been raised by her mother and her uncle. After her uncle died, even the mother became a uh, Franciscan nun. So there's the first order were the priests. The second order were the nun. Third order was laity. The laity people could be a part of the third order. If you hear the term, like in our church and in uh, Colleyville, we're run by the TOR, which is Third Order, Order Regular. The TOR are actually a priestly group that kind of evolved out of the laity group. And so they dress a little differently than the Franciscan friars, but they still follow a lot of the same thing as the Franciscan friars. Anyway, so... We went and saw San Damiano. We went and saw the Church of St. Clair. We saw the actual cross that was hanging in San Damiano that supposedly the words of Christ came out and, and Francis heard them. Um, we went down to St. Francis, the Basilica of St. Francis, and uh, certainly it was built... And, and you think about the words that came from St. Francis of rebuild my church at the time. And now between this time and now, say, two or three hundred years later, the church was corrupt. And uh, Fran I, Francis was commissioned to rebuild Christ's church and that rebuilding was, you know, I would say uh, uh, an allegory, or maybe not an allegory, was pointing towards what happened in the Reformation, etc., that we need to rebuild the tr church so that we see uh, we don't have the problems that eventually actually occurred during the Reformation. So... Um, this was the 1200s, the Reformation is 14, 1500. So it was a, just a great day. Um, we walked tomorrow where we got a good, you know, re-energizing recovery day. Um, had a great tour. Alessandra was unbelievable. If you ever are coming here, there's a company called Tours by Local, and Alessandra lives right outside of Sissy, and she's probably just the best tour guide that we've ever had. So she's just very knowledgeable, and it was such a great day. And uh, anyway, it's hard to explain the joy that the three of us had today as we spent the day in Assisi praying and um, boy, it was just, it was just wonderful. I'm not even sure I can, I can properly um, tell you how great the day was. So tomorrow we start walking again.
uh, and we start heading towards Rome. We're going to have three day walk and then we're going to get to Spolito and we're going to take another day off and then um, we're going to get to Rieti four or five days. Later. We got 15, excuse me, 14 more days of walking and uh, then we'll get to Rome and I'll be heading home. So we've, it, it's, we're not quite halfway through even yet. So anyway, love everybody. Uh, pray for us. Uh, I am praying for you and, and I really feel it when, when I get the messages of how great, uh, the, the videos have been, that's great. And the Facebook, normally I do my Facebook first and then I do the video afterwards. But today I felt like I had to do the video first and then I'll do the Facebook probably tomorrow. Anyway, love you guys. We'll talk soon.